In the south of Vietnam, there is Ho Chi Minh City, a metropolis in high, unlike many, with a population of over 8 million Vietnamese people and probably as many bags too. By the Saigon River, people live day by day, night by night. When the sun falls, the city transforms, and this urban megalopolitan becomes an even more saturated version of its highly connected self. Children play out on the busy streets, whilst the buzz of nightlife rushes all around them, like a sort of organized chaos rearranging itself within a noise of bedlam. Meet our humble host, Kai Poirier. He is an Aussie man who now calls Vietnam his home. A home to which he enjoys teaching English to his many Vietnamese students. But this story is not about Kai. In this very room, Kai's journey will meet with another. And it is here where our story may begin. This is Kwa. He usually travels into the city far away from his hometown, usually to study. But today, his routine takes a turn because he has a story to share. In Kai's home, we begin with one question. So, five, years, five years from now, where do you think you will be? Five years from now, you think you will be like this? What are you doing? Hello? Um, I really, I'm dumbfounded at how this man keeps it together, you know, with, with his family situation. Kwa told us how life in the beautiful countryside can be cruel. And how, in the bottom pits of poverty, the resilient mother battles to raise her family without her deceased husband. Kai was invited to learn more and travel to the hometown where Kwa and his family live. By ferry, they sail across the river, cramped together like cattle. Further down the long stretches of beautiful countryside roads, a number of people dwindle, and the scenery ever more green and vibrant. Like a breath of fresh air, it looks like a paradise. This is Khor Kwam. This is Kwa's home. This is Kwa's story. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Good, good, good to see you. Yeah, thank you. Xin chào mẹ. Nice to meet you. Xin chào cô. And uh, see his sister. Okay. This this room is you have a bedroom, a dining room, and living room. Because I see you have a TV. Yeah. Chỉ riêng phòng trong kia là chỉ để mẹ với chị ngủ thôi. Còn ngoài đây là ngủ với phòng khách về phòng xem phim và phòng ăn. Yeah. 
beautiful views. Quite amazing. Chỗ nhìn đẹp quá. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Bathroom. Wow. Hey. Gee. Qua. In here you shower. Uh, bathroom, uh, basin, <laughs> basin out there. Well, because I just think there's not much privacy. Yeah, not much. Wow, hey guys. Well, rural Vietnam. A team move out onto the rice fields where the family spend most of their time tending to their crops. This looks so beautiful when the wind comes right along and the whole leaves just go down in layer. It looks beautiful to me. Wow. It looks like a Mexican wave with the crop. I like it. Dạ cái cánh đồng này làm là khoảng 3 tháng mấy là sẽ thu nhập thì Sau khi thu nhập nếu mà được mùa là mình khoảng kiếm được khoảng dư dư để trang trải là khoảng 3-4 triệu Còn nếu mà thất mùa là trang trải khoảng 2-3 triệu Lúc đó là mình cân nhắc mình ăn để cho trang trải cho đầy đủ Thì bên cạnh đó thì trước đó em có nói là có hàng tháng mẹ với chị có trợ cấp xã hội Đủ để trang trải tiền thuốc thì bù qua một phần để ăn a lot of mixed feelings. The first thing that comes to my mind is how in the hell do these people do it day in, day out, month in, month out for such what we term a pitiful income. I don't know how people survive out here. Life on a farm is first to work, so Kua shows Kai where they get their drinking water from. The drinking water is poured into a large container which doubles as a filter for the contaminated water which just simply allows the sedimentary excrement to descend to the bottom where it lays. There's worms, there's pet holes. So many different germs in there. This is the water they use to drink. And as you can hear by my voice, it's empty. I think they need a huge shot of rain here just to survive, just for drinking. Because they can't drink that. It's too dirty to drink. Because it actually comes from the pond behind me. That's what they wash their clothes in. That's what they wash their dishes in. This water is purely for drinking. I would never, ever, ever want to drink this water. You know, that's quite a delicious taste. It's fresh. But I know where it comes from and there are probably tens of thousands of microbes in there that will make me sick on the trip back home. But out in this heat in the countryside of Vietnam where there's no air conditioning, you must drink water. Rice and pork is a special of the day, a rare treat compared to the usually modest portion of rice and egg. Mm -hmm.
This this food is delicious. You want the normal one? Yeah, so, one. Uh, so um um got got um uh long wa long wa is that correct? <laughs> yes. How long since your father has passed away? Ba mất bao lâu rồi? Dạ. Là mười ba năm. Fifteen years. Do you do you have a picture of father? Yeah, could I have a look? Is okay? Yeah, thank you. I, I won't touch it. I'll just have a look. Yeah? He looked to be strong man. Mr. Lee died of a heart attack many years ago, one that is sorely felt today. Must be hard. Yeah,蛮好,那个好看 sau khi cha mất thì chỉ mẹ tìm mọi cách để làm để vượt qua điều đó. Thì ba mất rồi và cha nó mất rồi thì cũng ráng bươn chải mần mấy mươi sào ruộng đó để cho mần chứ mình đang lo cho hai cô cho khoa đi học còn đó thì nhỏ kia thì nó 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 đi mần nó học học cái lớp lớp ba cái nó nghỉ tôi tôi thấy ra điều kiện mới hồi con nhập nghỉ thì chứ giờ hoàn cảnh mình nó khó khăn quá không nghỉ thì chứ còn nó đi học á thì nó nghỉ á thì kêu nó nghỉ á thì nó nghe lời mẹ nó nghỉ mà nhưng mà cũng buồn cho con học cái lớp ba để nó nghỉ à rồi nó lo làm cho mẹ rồi nó có chồng thời gian nó để cái dần dở dần dở đi nó mần nó trở nó ba bốn tháng gì đó rồi nó gửi cho anh chịu mà con ổng mất rồi thì cũng ráng lo lo cho hai con con hồng thì nó bệnh hoài à mẹ cũng bệnh nữa cũng ráng ráng làm kiếm tiền cho con này đi học cho con này đi học honestly go time my heart goes out to you like you um, in 1992 I lost not only my best friend, but uh, he was my brother as well. And the hardest thing, and I will never forget, the hardest thing was coming back home from the funeral and having that first meal. The chair was then empty. And you have to deal with that empty chair for the rest of your life. So I know it's hard for you. And it's, it's not a good experience. It's not a nice feeling. You know, as I've been sitting here and walking around the property, I've been doing a lot of thinking about Kwa and his father. Kwa says, it's been 13 years since his father passed away and that he's used to that now. But I actually think that's not the truth. I, I know from experience, you never get over a loss of a caring, loving family member such as a father. I tend to believe that Kwa is just keeping it inside. He doesn't want to release his frustration or his anger or his pain on, on the loss of his father. Because if he does, I think he thinks he'd be letting his mother down by not being the man of the family should that happen. And that, that is a problem because everybody else has to release their inner frustrations. And Kwa has not done that yet. Yeah, I can do. Um, Miss Hong? Hong? 
Home. Home. Hello, home. 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 And what what do you do on the property? À, hồng thì làm cái gì trong nhà con? Hồng nó thì à, sáng dậy cái kêu đó, nó không biết gì trơn á, hả biểu gì là máy giặt đồ rồi thầy, để bắt đầu cái sai làm cái nhà rồi nhé thầy. Chứ nó hồi ra nó không biết gì trơn. She has some problems with her skin. Can you tell me about that? Là chị mắt là phải khoảng 7 8 năm rồi. Lúc đó là lúc đó là chị nổi từng lẫm từng lẫm nhỏ ở ở tay chân thôi. Nhưng mà do lúc đó điều kiện khó khăn không có tiền nên không có dẫn chị đi bệnh viện khám bệnh. Thì ra chỉ mua thuốc thông thường ở tiệm thuốc tây để thoa thôi. Nhưng mà càng ngày càng thoa thì nó không có trúng thuốc á. Cứ lan lan nhiều nhiều dần rồi nên dẫn đến bây giờ dẫn đến toàn thân luôn. Tại lúc đó là rất là khó khăn việc trang trải gia đình không đủ không đủ ăn chứ chưa kể đến là nghĩ đến việc dẫn chị đến bệnh viện. Nên hậu quả là bây giờ là bị toàn thân như vậy khoảng 7 đến 5. Em không how do you feel? Chị không thấy buồn chị không. Buồn cơ. Nó buồn. Ha. Ha say. You know, thinking about the daughter's medical history and current history, I tend to think that she is quite quite ill. She doesn't have the communication skills to to help on the property as much as I think she might want to do as being a daughter for her mum. I think her medical conditions weigh her down a lot not just physically but mentally i think she understands more than what people give her credit for and you know i think she has feelings and her conditions i think she's very shy about them. Gautam, how do you feel about your daughter's disease how does it affect you uh, thầy cũng như là, là thấy nó hoài đi chị hoài nó không hết đó để nó không như người ta không có giống như con ta đó thì rồi thấy cũng buồn lắm thầy thì cũng phải gán sợ sống mình nó thì còn gái còn cứ chạy ra mẹ Look, what a beautiful lady, you know, uh, I don't mean necessarily on the outside, I mean her heart. She is just an amazingly strong-willed woman. Um, I've met a lot of women in my life that are determined and motivated, but she's number one. Yeah, she, she plays the the role of a mom and a father too. And mums are, are there to, to guide us, to nurture us and to get us through all of life's obstacles. But she goes above and beyond. She really does. Yeah. What, what a, a wonderful, wonderful lady. You know, I admire her. Mm. I really admire her. Yeah. Like, just put me in her situation. Fuck no, I cannot do anything. I will give up, just go, un go under the ground. That's all, mm. what can I will do. You know, the other day, when I was in Ho Chi Minh City, Minding my own business, just doing my grocery shopping. I was looking at all the vegetables and all the fruit, and I saw organic potatoes. And the instant I saw them, I thought about this family and what, what happened, what would happen to this family if they couldn't use their pesticides, if they had to go purely organic grown pesticides. The market and governments tell us don't ever use pesticides. They can cause cancer. They can give you bad health problems. Sure, might be true. You come here and tell this wonderful family that. Because if they don't use pesticides, they don't eat. You would think out of all the crops that they have, they would make money out of something so small. 
it's not the case. Somebody here is making money and I tend to believe it's the same as in any country. It's the supermarkets, it's the, the multinational conglomerates who are making money, not the farmers, not the people who break their back every day for such a pitiful amount of money. Returning back to the house, they talk more about how Kwa manages his troubles. Thầy, thầy đã hiểu như vậy là em rất là rất là rất là cảm ơn bởi vì thầy hiểu được cái cái nỗi áp lực đó cái sự khó khăn đó. Aren't you um, scared of the future? Dạ, lo sợ với áp lực là từ nhỏ là em luôn sống trong tình trạng đó thì ra. Um, Em chỉ sợ nhất là mình bỏ cuộc, mình bị yếu đuối, mình bỏ cuộc, mình không tiếp tục được thôi. Chứ ngoài ra những cái nỗi áp lực đó, những cái nỗi sợ đó là em đã quen, đã chấp nhận, đã sống với nó lâu. Dạ, cũng có một vài kỷ niệm về bố em mà em luôn giữ nó làm động lực để học tốt. Và trong mọi trong mọi những mọi sự thành công mà em đạt được đó là cái có nhiều lần lúc đó em còn rất nhỏ khoảng 7 tuổi em lập học lớp 1. Thì lúc đó là trời rất là mưa to. Đường rất là bùn lầy thực sự là một đứa nhỏ như em thì không có khả năng đến trường lúc đó thì cha cha mới làm để chân trần thì cổng con từ từ đây từ nhà cho đến trường cách khoảng 2 km lúc đó thì cha mặc áo mưa để trùm để trùm cho kín không bị mưa từ nhà lên trường a father's unconditional love for his son. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Okay, my friend, thank you very much for inviting me out to your very special tree. And thank you for telling me about your dreams, your hopes, your goals, and everything you want to achieve. It has been a long day, but now it is time to depart and say goodbye. See you soon. The crew return back to the urban jungle where Kai has been left with much uncertainty. To me, it looks like paradise. When you first come up on, on the bike, up the track, you go, wow, this is amazing. But when you get into the nitty gritty and the story behind what happens here, it's not paradise. Paradise has two, two sides. This is not paradise. Um, it looks it, but it's not. For the, the poor struggling Vietnamese family, I would say this is hell. 